New opportunities, convenience, security, and empowerment, a higher efficiency for business. For Hong Kongers like Ying, this is what the hypothetical digital Hong Kong dollar or EHKD may represent. A central bank digital currency, leading to accelerated and simplified traditional financial processes to speed up money flows with less resistance and cost, benefiting buyers, sellers, and the economy at large. Processes that take weeks of paperwork between third parties will be completed almost instantly in a few clicks. As part of the EHKD pilot program, Fubon Bank, Ripple, and partners have spent months developing a faster way to unlock home equity and turn it into credit through a home equity line of credit loan or HELOC loan, dramatically shortening the application process. It starts in the Fubon Bank online portal. Ying sees his currently mortgaged properties, picks the one he wants additional credit on. Fubon Bank already pre-qualified the amount of equity Ying can realize based off the property value and criteria such as income, credit history, prepayment history, and other information. Yang reviews the offer and terms, then confirms. The bank's interest in the mortgaged property, the lien, is tokenized safely and transparently on the blockchain ledger. This token, once deposited in the lending protocol vault, activates Yang's ability to borrow. He just decides how much credit he wants, and in his vault dashboard, details around asset and liability update in real time. From LTV, interest, repayment terms, asset liability, total loan amount, it's all there. Quick transparency into personal finances, making it easy to budget costs if a bigger loan is needed. The credit instantly appears as hypothetical EHKD minted securely by Fubon Bank using the Ripple CBDC platform, each being worth one Hong Kong dollar and can be used immediately. A part of the money is used as a deposit for Yang Sun's down payment on a new home. The rest of the loan can be used to finance his daughter's last year of university. Ying turned his home equity into credit to be used however he needs, with a few clicks from the comfort of his own home, without hoops to jump through, without annoying paperwork, without needing to travel, visit, and consult multiple third parties. And as the hypothetical EHKD ecosystem grows, so will benefits from the trend, from increased productivity to time saved and lower cost per transaction, to eventually see seamless exchange of hypothetical EHKD as a CBDC all over the world. That's the exciting potential of hypothetical EHKD. Unlocking your home equity is only the beginning. Being able to send and spend money how you want, where you want, without burden. That's the real power. And that's the vision of the future Fubon Bank, Ripple, and partners are exploring under the HKMA's EHKD pilot program. The real estate industry is plagued with paper-based, time-consuming, antiquated processes. Only 7% of global real estate is available to investors, whereas 80% want to invest. Real estate is extremely illiquid, and investors are usually stuck with their investments for many years. DigiShares solves these problems with our blockchain-based tokenization platform. We help real estate developers and asset managers digitize and automate their processes. They can reach new types of investors and allow their investors to trade. Our platform gives any asset manager or real estate developer full control over financing and management, both for asset sales and new development projects. Real estate-backed tokens can be issued, sold to investors, or traded on the platform. This extreme degree of automation provides high efficiency and low cost. DigiShares allows asset managers to fractionalize, giving smaller investors access to real estate. The result is democratization and equal opportunity access to wealth, both key visions behind blockchain technology. Tokens issued from the DigiShares platform are usable within the entire blockchain ecosystem. They can be traded on exchanges, stored safely with trusted custodians, or used as long-term collateral for DeFi lending. Best of all, DigiShares platform doesn't force real estate investors to use crypto to invest and trade. We provide on-ramp systems where investors can deposit and withdraw dollars and other currencies. While the platform uses blockchain to automate transactions, we don't impose it on our users. 
Contact DigiShares if you want to get full control, reduce administrative cost, and offer many new functions to your investors. There will be adoption. It will happen. I mean, I, I don't have doubts about uh, how, but I don't have a crystal ball saying it's going to happen in the next five years. You see what I'm saying? Uh, beyond five, I can't make a prediction, uh, but uh, those are the areas where uh, the focus has to be, product development has to be. Thanks. Thanks for that. A uh, quick five minutes for Q&A. Uh, one of the questions I have from Nathaniel is how do you, how does the panel see inflation affecting their work? So maybe in how's inflation impacting crypto trading? I know we've seen big swings <laughs> in the past month, so <laughs> I don't look at my crypto portfolio much nowadays. But <laughs> I can take that very quickly and then peg our um... Right? So I think there are two opposing forces of inflation. So one is cost of money becomes more expensive. So Priya earlier could borrow against her home at 2%, 3%. Now it's six. So she may think, hey, you know what? Do I want to swing with Bitcoin or not? Right? So that's so some amount of speculation should go down because cost of trading, I mean cost, I mean cost of capital becomes more expensive, right? But she wants to put out for that. I think the on the opposite side, the, the force is that Bitcoin in some way it's limited, right? So one could say, hey, you know what? There will be 40% of money that has been printed. It's inflationary in nature. I want to head some of my portfolio to be in crypto, right? So there is that adoption cycle, uh, which, which still is at in, in early stages. So I think these are two opposing forces, which essentially will impact the crypto market. I think yeah, I mean, it, it's a philosophical question at this point until we have more data. So you can sit on one side of the pond or another. And I think in a few years, we, we find out if um, crypto is inflation hedge or just moves with um, the rest of uh, monetary policy and other investing assets. And I'm sure this will change over time as other use cases develop, but still the bulk of use cases is still trading. So. I think I have my personal views on that. Um, and each person will probably have their personal views. But I think with respect to, you know, what we build and how we build products, it doesn't necessarily impact, impact it, right? We just, we're always cognizant of liquidity and how liquidity moves, um, but we're not taking, making a bet on it. So we build all the same, but with like extra, alertness of what's happening with liquidity and what do we need to make sure that we're set up my thoughts uh, are uh, i look at it structurally and uh, that once you sort of uh, segment it that way you can then reflect in a better way so crypto is a store of value um it depends um, it will certainly be exposed to inflationary pressures like any other store of value, okay? Crypto as a exchange of value, that will not be impacted. The problem is people confuse these fundamental things. Um, most people's, their approach to crypto, at least from a consumer standpoint, is more of a store of value. I'm gonna put this, and it's the greater fool theory, you know, it will keep increasing. Uh, we focus on crypto as exchange of value, not store of value. However, it's very hard to decouple because once you exchange it to crypto, it again is subject to those same inflationary pressures. Now, the question, and there was a product question that popped up, what to build? That's what you got to focus on. How do you essentially decouple store of value with exchange of value? If you can do that in a meaningful way, that's what it's at. The reason why there is a lot of buzz about USDC or any CBDCs is because, you know, I am not, uh, if I use that as a store of value, there will be essentially inflationary pressures if I'm going to put, you know, 100 grand under my mattress. Yes. However, if I'm simply using $100 to change or buy products that are $100, the inflationary pressure doesn't impact me as much. 
And so that the, the key area of focus, because then you are inflation resistant. I'm not going to say inflation immune. If you can essentially figure out a way to decouple these two aspects of uh, crypto, the biggest uh, risk I, I see in the crypto world is where the store of value gets deflated and then people lose their life's worth and then essentially brings a bad name to a technology or a framework, if you will. But if we can focus on exchange of value, which we focus on, uh, hopefully uh, we can do that in a meaningfully decoupled way that we can sustain it going forward. I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to say. <laughs>